Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I'm having one of those days. <laughs> this is the fourth time starting this video. I'll explain later. And if I'm looking at the wrong lens, it's because I have a backup camera over there, just in case. But several people sent me this story. Man first to plead guilty in major diesel engine emissions tampering case. Uh, out of Michigan from MLive.com, John Agar wrote this, a Howard City man on Tuesday admitted he and others tampered with heavy-duty diesel engines to evade emission controls. Uh, the man's 55 years old. He's among 11 men and three companies accused of violating the Federal Clean Air Act, which regulates sources of mobile pollution. U.S. Attorney Mark Totten has called the investigation by the U.S. Environmental Agency's Criminal Investigation Division one of the largest of its kind ever charged in the U.S., he pleaded guilty before U.S. Magistrate Judge Roy Kent in Grand Rapids to tampering with emissions monitoring devices in 2017 and 2018, referring first to the man I talked about earlier, the 55-year-old man. When the judge asked me he was pleading guilty freely, he said, yeah, I feel I don't have any options, so I don't have the money to fight the government. But the judge noted he was represented by a federal public defender. And then the man responded, well, it's just hard on me. Nobody forced me to plead guilty. So the court will ask you, are you pleading guilty freely and of your own free will and all that? Or is anybody threatening you or anything like that? And so otherwise, just simply the threat is you'll go to trial and roll the dice if you don't take plea. He faces up to two years in prison, one year on supervised release, and a quarter of a million dollars in fines. He's expected to be sentenced in about four months by U.S. District Judge Paul Maloney in Kalamazoo. As part of the agreement, he has to cooperate with prosecutors. He's free on bond pending sentencing. And uh, Assistant U.S. Attorney Justin Present said in court that if the case went to trial, prosecutors would use testimony of witnesses, industry experts, and those who analyze trucks and business records and other evidence seized during the execution of the search warrants. Charges were announced late last month. The government said the defendants were involved at different levels to delete emissions controls devices in an attempt to improve performance and fuel economy and save on costs. Removing emissions controls can increase output of nitrogen oxides, particulate matter, carbon monoxide, and hydrocarbons. The government said that one company removed or altered hardware while another reprogrammed the truck's engine computers. Uh, one company allegedly engaged the other two to delete the stuff from the trucks, the government said in court records. Now, there's a bunch of other people named here, but it's unclear what they're accused of doing. They've not entered pleas yet, so I'm not going to mention them by name, but they're from all over the place. Gaylord, Indian River, Mount Pleasant, Wayland, Byron Center, Grand Rapids, Hudsonville, and so on. Uh, two of these people uh, own a company based out of Grand Rapids, but it operates across the U.S. The alleged tampering of emissions controls happened between 2012 and 2018. Government said that defendants used code words on invoices to conceal efforts to delete the emission controls. So they wouldn't actually fill out an invoice and said, we have illegally deleted the controls off your engine in violation of federal law pay this amount, thank you. Now, I'd say like you just got the super duper tune-up or something. The EPA has conducted a nationwide crackdown on aftermarket devices intended to bypass emissions. Two of the companies have agreed to pay a combined $1 million fine, and one of them has agreed to pay a $750,000 fine. The penalty, however, is up to the judge at sentencing. Last year, two companies in Oakland County, Michigan, were fined $10 million for, for selling diesel defeat devices. Two of the companies... Earlier released statements that said that the two companies are committed to being responsible employers, good corporate citizens, and environmental stewards. We've taken this matter extremely seriously and have willfully cooperated with investigating authorities. We've also taken action to ensure all our vehicles are fully compliant with state and federal regulations. We believe this plea agreement is in the best interest of our companies so we can move forward and focus our time and attention on continuing to serve the needs of our customers and employees. So this brings to mind several things I have to tell you that I handled the case for a gentleman about a brand new long haul truck. He's an independent trucker. I sat down and talked to the guy for a long, long time about what he did and he explained to me how his business worked. And he showed me how he'd go into a website and try to find things he could haul from Michigan to, say, California. He'd bid on it. If he got the job, he'd go pick it up. He'd haul it there. And then he'd try to set it up so that he'd have a haul that he could bring back. And if his truck broke down, it caused all of that to fall apart because it's all so tightly scheduled that it would allow him to keep his truck moving at all times and making money. And when his truck broke down, it was catastrophic. And he had one of the first of the modern trucks with all this diesel stuff on it uh, for, for the clean diesel. And the manufacturer was baffled. They, they, they couldn't figure out how to, how to fix his truck. It was driving him crazy. And so I managed to get him a decent result in that case. 
But there's some other things going on here. And one of the things I'd be worried about, and by the way, I've got a lot of truck drivers in my audience, and I appreciate that. And, I, and I, I've said before that people need to understand that without truck drivers, this country would grind to a halt. Everything you buy in a store, everything you touch in a store was, was brought on a truck at one time or another. It may have come to America on a cargo container on a ship, or it may have crossed the country on a train, but somewhere it got put in a truck and taken to the store or to the depot or something. It's, it's the trucks are the ones that connect all these things together. Without them, the country, like I said, grinds to a halt. So they're extremely important. But having said that, I can also tell you that I had a client once who years ago saw an ad in the back of a magazine, I believe, that said that you can get free uh, satellite TV by buying this little thing and installing it at your house. And so he bought it, and after getting it, he's thinking to himself, you know, this might not be that good of an idea. And he sent it back, and he got a refund, and he had the paperwork to prove it. And his, uh, his uh, wife was a friend of mine, and she called me up and said, hey, uh, my husband's got some legal issues here. Can you help him with them? And he'd gotten a letter from a law firm that says, we represent the company that is that satellite company that you bought that decoder for. And it, it's an illegal thing. You can't use that. Now, he had the proof that he sent it back. So I sent them a letter saying, I have proof that my client sent that back. Here's the paperwork, boom, 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 boom. And they're like, okay, cool. And they dropped it. But what had happened was the people who own the satellite company see the same ads that you do. Like, hey, check it out. Someone's selling a thing that's going to hurt us. There's a federal law against this. So they go to the feds. The feds get involved. Next thing you know, they've got the company that's making those. And to get themselves out of hot water, or at least to cool the water down a bit, they offer to turn over all the customer lists. You want the names, addresses, phone numbers, and credit card information for every single person who bought one from us? Sure. Here you go. Will that, will that buy us some time? So here we've got several companies and a bunch of people who are all facing very, very serious charges in federal court. And they've got records. Now, it looks like the feds have already got those records. But they've also told these people here, you want to plead guilty, we'll go easy on you if you cooperate with us in the investigation, which means you'll testify later. So it's a very good chance that they're starting at the top. They've got the companies that did it. They've got the employees that did it. They've got the people who ran the companies. And now they'll start going after the people who had this done to their vehicles. So that's what I'd be concerned about if I was somehow swept up in this, that your name might be on a list someplace as somebody who did this if, in fact, you paid a company to do that to your truck. So that's the real concern here. Uh, it does say that this happened back in 2017 and 2018 with respect to this guy. But I saw some dates that said that it actually dated back to 2012. The statute of limitations may have run on some of those older claims, but the more recent ones are the ones that are concerning. So I'd be very curious to see how many other people this touches, but you got to be very, very careful because those statutes, uh, federal statutes on this are very, very serious, and they carry very heavy uh, fines as well as potential jail time. So that's obviously an ugly situation. Again, if you are a truck driver and you listen to my show while driving, I congratulate you. Uh, if my voice keeps you awake... <laughs> <laughs> the truck drivers of America are to be saluted because they are the only subset of people on this planet whose voice, who, who, who don't find my voice something that puts them to sleep. <laughs> just ask my students. No, I'm just kidding. So there you go. Uh, it's an interesting case out of Michigan, but there's going to be a lot more to come. But this is simply the first man to plead guilty in major diesel engine emissions tampering case. John Agar wrote that for M Live. Doug, Edward, and Sean all sent it. And now, of course, I've got a backup camera running. This camera appears to have worked. So we'll see what happens. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. If you tell a joke in the forest, but nobody laughs, was it a joke?